people who travel the world. What did you choose not to say about a country you visited to keep the story positive? The sheer number of people sleeping on the street. On footpaths. Under bridges in Mumbai and Pune. India. Whole families. I just got back and I'm still thinking about it. There was a lot to love about India. But we saw some heartbreaking things too. When I fell down a flight of stairs in Hungary and broke my back not a single person stopped to help me while I screamed in pain. I remember a girl in Russia telling me that she once called the ambulance for a stranger that had had an accident in the street and that the police kept questioning her about how she knew the victim. They didn't believe she wasn't involved because in Russia you would not commonly just help a stranger like that. Edit. For the record I am not trying to say that Russians would never be helpful. I was only in Russia for two weeks and this is just a story a Muscovite girl told me and not my personal experience. Belize was amazing. All the things I did were incredibly fun and I never felt scared of anything. However I never met a single guy who I didn't feel was creeping on me. Middle aged men were basically all the Belizeans we met and while they were all nice I felt like none of them respected any girls, literally wouldn't listen to a word we said unless a guy repeated it, and when they talked to us it felt like it was only to hit on us. But beyond that everyone was very nice and I loved the experience as a whole. So that part gets left out of my stories. Broke a rib when getting ganged up on in a bathroom in Serbia after one of the guys thought I was looking at his girlfriend. Terrible food poisoning in Ethiopia after eating raw ground beef. Would have normally avoided it. But the family who served it to us saved up for days to afford it. Yangon. Where I live now. Has obscenely high housing prices. Like Nick Tokyo High. Also the sidewalks have giant holes that you can fall into and die. And the number of people missing fingers and toes. I was visiting Auschwitz and there was a group of Chinese tourists in our tour group. I've never been so disgusted by a group's antics in my life. They were giggling and laughing. Talking very loudly through exhibits like a room filled with children's shoes. Taking selfies in front of a firing squad wall. If you've never been. Auschwitz is an eerie place. The entire camp is one big grave. How anyone could find humor in a place like that I'll never understand it. Our home. There with a girlfriend. One morning at the hotel breakfast the receptionist. Uninvited. Decided to sit next to her and try it on. He used weapons grade Italian charm. He told her she should come spend the day with him. Go to a club he knew. Dance. Drink. Watch sunrise at the forum then make love. She declined and said she was with me and pointed to me sitting aghast and mildly amused. He took a sneering look at me and said something like what? You're with this English pig. You should be with me. Valentino. Dut. He flounced back to his desk and gave me daggers until we left. Kind of ruined the expectations of the place but go it's great. Might be a bit late. But went to Portugal and guys would follow me the length of a street or courtyard offering me a list of drugs and or sx services. It's decriminalized there. But I simply don't want any. It doesn't bother me at all to see people working a street. But I don't like being followed. Very small complaint because Lisboa is incredible. I was scammed at a nightclub in Istanbul. I met some other travelers and I joined their private table for most of the night. At the end. I was left with a 4000 USD bill. In reality. The cost should have been in the 400 US dollars range. And I was prepared to contribute to the bill. The whole club was full of people in on the scam. So when the bill came. The place cleared out and I was escorted to the ATM machine. My life threatened along the way. The ATM denied me so I was forced to call my credit card company. They denied raising my credit limit to pay the club. At the end of the day. I convinced them I had another credit card at my hotel. They escorted me to the hotel. I told the front desk what was up and they locked the doors and called the cops. Turns out the group that had me was recently busted with large amounts of money. Drugs and weapons. Did a tour of the west coast of the US and loved almost all of it. But was really shocked by the homeless population in San Francisco. 
The first thing I saw leaving my hotel was a guy smoking crack on the street at 4 in the afternoon. Not many people talk seem to know about it outside the US. I'm a Brit currently living in the San Francisco area and I'm always sure never to mention to people back home the overwhelming number of homeless people around here. It makes me so sad that people in one of the wealthiest cities in the wealthiest country on the planet have to live in a soiled sleeping bag under a freeway. Peru was amazing. Except the animals were treated like shit. I know that they were considered working animals. But seeing people throw rocks at the cats was really heart wrenching. I saw a dog that had gotten hit by a truck. Another dog was torn between whining and seeming upset and eating the dead one. Because it was literally starving. It was so starved for affection that it got an erection when we went to pet it. It's been 3 years and it still makes me sad. Especially since one of the people offered to let me have a kitten. And I had no way to bring it back home with me. I feel like shti every time I think about it. Djibouti was pretty awful. Why people would ever go on holiday there is beyond me. For the sake of my family's nerves I never told them that the Chinese restaurant we ate at was bombed several weeks after I left. Same shti happened in Kabul to a good Lebanese restaurant but everybody already knows Kabul is a shti hole. Afghanistan. In the ethnically Pashtun areas especially. Young boys are prized for their beauty and are sexually exploited by older men in a bizarre form of apprenticeship. It's very widespread and it is not only socially accepted. Is a kind of social status symbol for the men who engage in these relationships. Most boys end up married off to a woman in the abuser's extended family. Or enter into the man's business when they hit puberty. Relationships stop when a boy starts to get facial hair. Because that makes it homosexual. It's really hard to talk about. Because most Americans have a hard time believing it. There is a fascinating essay written about the phenomenon by a female American PhD sociologist. Who traveled around the country for a while with the USMC. Maybe someone can find the article if there's sufficient interest. The harsh level of racism in Japan. There were restaurants that I could be taken to for a business lunch. But only lunch. They were closed to me at night for dinner because I was not Japanese. Other places I wasn't allowed in under any circumstances. The local business partners wouldn't even discuss it. They would just say, no. No. Not possible, and look around uncomfortably. In Amsterdam. The hostel I was at had co-ed dorms. So it wasn't uncommon for people to be having sex or whatever. New guy moves in next to me on third day. Third night he carries in totally unconscious girl and proceeds to undress her. It was definitely going in the uppay direction. I went and got the hostel supervisor. Because my German is bad and I was in the rare mood at 19 where I didn't want to get into a fist fight. By the time we're back in the room, about 45 seconds, he is getting her pants off and her shirt is off. The hostel guy starts questioning him. He says it's his girlfriend. Etc. Etc. But when we ask him her name he doesn't know it. He's pissed off starts throwing things all over the place and gets ejected. We moved her into a private room. The only one in the hostel. And I slept by the door that night. When she woke up in the morning I told her what happened and she broke down. It was awful. I've never told anyone that story because Amsterdam was amazing otherwise and our pay stories don't make for story material. Bolivia. Everyone told me it's great. The people were cunts. They piss in the streets. I saw several drivers fist fighting over petty reasons. They yell. Are rude. Very uneducated. Lie and want your money. The food is awful and I had diarrhea the entire time I was there. Turns out a lot of people told me Bolivia was great because it was cheap. Well. You get what you pay for. Still. Uyuni was amazing and I really liked the Amazon there. Not a big fan of most of the cities though. Switzerland was absolutely stunning. If there weren't any people around. The Swiss people I met were. To a person. Very rude. In the old adage. If you meet one asshole in a day. He's an asshole. If everyone you meet is an asshole. You're the asshole. I went and poured over everything I did said to see if I'd been in the slightest bit rude. Mean. 
Snotty. Superior. Anything. I'm an American. And this was the 80s. We were all trying to be nice to everyone. After all. Russia was almost at the breaking point. We were in the united colors of Benetton. I seriously. Seriously wasn't trying to be a DCK in any way. Yet was treated with dickishness at every turn. All in all. I visited 9 countries when I was there. And I can't say the slightest bad thing about any of them. Except Switzerland. French people? Amazing. Polite. Sweet. Parisians were a bit New York style superior, or the other way around, but are still great folks. Germans were gracious. Polite. Funny. Italians. Oof. I didn't want to leave. Spain and Portugal were the same way. Greece was stunning and the folks treated you like you were family. Switzerland. Not so much. There's a lot of stray dogs in Peru. I've heard that stray dogs are kind of the norm in Latin American countries. And most of the ones I encountered didn't want anything to do with anyone passing by. However. There was one stray that I passed frequently while walking to a project I was working at and he was extremely aggressive. To the point that I started carrying rocks in my bag in case he chased me. He would follow me for blocks. Remaining hidden in a yard until I passed by. He'd bare his teeth and growl. He also slobbered a lot. I didn't think it was rabies. But I'm also not 100% convinced it's not rabies. I lived in various parts of Guatemala for a few years and it was the same there. Once in a while the police would set aside a certain day or days to cull the problem because they couldn't deal with the sheer number of dogs out there. They'd make an announcement to keep your dogs indoors and then roll up on all the strays and shoot them. I walked by a police truck once with a bed filled with dog carcasses and swarming with flies. That wasn't even the worst thing I saw in Guatemala by a long shot. When you go to Southeast Asia one thing you are struck by is their carefree approach to road safety. From your tuk-tuk it's typical to see a whole family on a single motorbike. None wearing helmets. Zipping through congested traffic without a worry in the world. As a tourist you know the whole thing is dangerous as hell. But it all seems to work in its own way and it's even a little charming and exhilarating to experience. On the way to the airport in Thailand we drove past the carnage of a motorbike accident. No helmet of course. Rider was plastered across the road. Try not to relive that memory when talking about the trip. I generally tell my stories. Because I want to show what the experience is really like and help other travelers make safe decisions. That said. My parents will never know that I got robbed in Jerusalem. I still love the city but I was definitely on my guard for the rest of the visit. I just don't want them to think less of me. Oh. And the guy had returned to the same place when I brought the police to the spot. And he still had my stuff. So I got it back. Which is nothing short of a miracle. He wasn't the brightest criminal. As a general rule. I enjoyed my. Brief. Visits to Paris. However I did have a couple of times when I'd visit a shop and the workers would just be dicks to me. I speak French okay. But I'm a bit slow. And I'd try to talk in French and the shopkeepers would basically laugh in my face talk about me to each other when I was standing in front of them. Still. Only a minor thing. I want to visit France again. The amounts of cocaine and violent crime in eastern Costa Rica was astounding. A woman I was traveling with got raped. An older guy I met, who had been vacationing there regularly for years, was robbed at gunpoint. A headless body washed up on the beach. The hostel I was staying at got raided by the Costa Rican FBI for drugs, and they found some. Like 2 kilograms in the hostel owner's possession. We left after that cuz word was there was a hit out on whoever ratted him out. Would not go again. Uruguay. The kinder. Gentler be curious cousin of Argentina and Brazil is secretly the littering capital of South America. Everybody just throws their trash on the sidewalk and nobody picks up their waste from their dogs that I'm still convinced the government issues because everybody has one. The gas they use is unlike our unleaded we use in the states so the air smells completely fking toxic. Unreal. It pains me to write this. Given my heritage but. Of the 40 or so countries I have visited. 
the most consistently awful groups of people I ever met, were young Israelis in Southeast Asia. In around 2003 I was traveling in Thailand, Laos, Cambodia and Malaysia. I think most of them had just finished their national service and were blowing off steam. But damn they were arrogant. Rude and selfish to a point of ridiculousness. I understand they had been through so much but they really didn't help themselves. Thai people were so amazing and patient with us foreigners. Even the drunken shenanigans were shrugged off. So quite what these Israelis were doing to anger the locals so much is beyond me. I lived in China twice. The first time I was studying abroad and made what I thought were lifelong friendships. Got a job there so I could be with all of my friends again. Quickly discovered that no one had planned to honor their offers for me to stay with them while I looked for an apartment. I moved from the US. When I got there I couldn't even find a place between 10 plus friends for one night and ended up staying in a hostel for a week until I found a place on Craigslist. My friends would tell me. That place is super dangerous. You can't stay there. It's run by gangs you will be kidnapped. Comma. But when I would ask if I could stay with them they would change the subject. A Singaporean friend told me that it's a cultural difference. But it was hard not to take it personally. Nigeria, Lagos. Filthy, raw sewer flowing down many streets. No clear town planning. Terrible traffic. Extremely corrupt. Noisy and body odor is very common as it is usually extremely hot, humid, and most people either cannot afford or cannot be bothered to wear Dio. Also a ridiculous amount of fake designer clothes. Shoes. Belts etc. Went to Milan a few months ago. Huge factories. Graffiti everywhere. Lots of homeless people. Shanty towns. Boarded up houses. Saw a guy attempt to pickpocket someone. And there were huge designer stores all over the city too. There seemed to be an enormous class difference. Only posted the cathedral on Facebook. South Korea. Please step aside if you are impeding the collective progress. If you cannot step aside. You will be shoved aside. The collective has spoken. Lives of quiet desperation. Is the national motto. Complaints are non-existent. Except if you're drinking. Then. Alcoholics. Alcoholics everywhere. Please try to understand the unique situation. Double quote. Also. When are you leaving? Nepal. My overall story is positive and I met some of the most incredible people I've ever met traveling. However. Nepal was the dirtiest place I've ever visited and the squalor that people live in actually made me cry one of the nights I was there. I was also mugged and it's the only country where I've actively been in fear that someone was about to really hurt me. The now destroyed, by earthquake, Durbar Square smelled like rotting piss and Nepal is the only country where I've fallen horrendously ill. I lost two days to the worst food poisoning I've ever had. It's the only country where people tell you they boil the vegetables and wash them in iodine as a selling point to get you to eat there. Nepal was interesting and equally sad. The people there work so hard and are so nice but some of the desperately poor people are so nasty and my B&B operators told us to close the shutters at night because people might try to steal things from our rooms or attack us with knives or hooks on long poles. I went to Paris with my parents as a kid. It was magical. Like something straight out of a movie. Cafs. Street painters. Street musicians and mostly the buildings and streets were so old and magical like a fairy tale. I would spend hours just running around looking at the different things and different people and pretending I was a musketeer. Then I ran into an alley and met a creepy guy who tried to get me to come into his van by offering me baked pastries and a PS2 video game. When I declined he tried to grab me and ran after me. Didn't stop until I made it out of the narrow streets and onto a big square with lots of people, also where my parents were waiting. The city felt. Less magical after this. Border officers in the US tend to be unnecessarily rude. It doesn't matter if you are entering by land or plane. You can feel they don't want you there. I have gone to the US many times and every single time it is the same. It really is a bummer for it to be your first experience entering the country. As the rest of the trip tends to be great.